What's up, permaculture people? It's the dirt goat here in the uh, what we call the wet field. As you can tell, it's pretty wet. Uh, <laughs> we dug some ponds here this spring because we've known that this spot in particular was always wet. It was a uh, it was like a seep, like water was always just kind of bubbling out of the ground, not really a spring or moving water at all, but just always wet and uh, you could just kind of see it seeping out of the ground. So we got a guy to help us move all of our old foundation stones into um, some terraces that we're building by the garage in the house, um, move all the biggest ones we could. I'm going to finish doing that by hand with all the smaller stones. But while he was here, we had him dig this, these little series of ponds up in the wet field here and... This is the by far uh, the deepest, the fullest we've ever seen it. It's actually all the way full. So this is the biggest one up at the highest spot. It's probably about five feet deep, and it's it's all the way up. Um, and so with each of these ponds, uh, I, I hand dug these little mini swales coming off of each one. Might be a little hard to see in this bright sun, but that's that's where the the low well the the highest point. Of the pond I, I decided to start the pond let me let me say it again the highest point that's low on the edge of the pond sounds kind of contradictory but basically I'm trying to make the water fill the pond as high as possible and then get and then overflow into this little swale right here which you can see it doing that's that's where the edge of the pond is and that's where the water begins in the swale so there might be just a little bit of shaving to do right there because it's awfully close over there by that rock to overflowing as well. So I'll do a little bit more digging right here. Just to encourage that water to really come this way into the swale. But you can see there is standing water in here. So it's either overflowed from the pond or just from the massive rains we've had. We've had a couple days, maybe two to three inches of rain in the past over the weekend. And um, we're going to have a little bit more. And this swale here, all of these swales, I got five right here in succession. And they all have uh, hazelnuts planted on them, and then we're also planted with annuals. So you can see tiny little hazelnuts. There's one. There's two. It's kind of hard to pick them out from the weeds and the leftover crops, but they're all just a couple feet tall. But this had uh, corn beans and squash. Um, it was a bit too shady up here for them to really do very well. And animals got most of them. We got a few squash, a few tiny little heads of corn. but And also, like, those crops often, you know, need... A lot of fertility and and i just gave them some compost it's primarily for these hazelnuts but kind of just filling the space with vegetables and seeing what works but yeah the the pond fills up and like i said overflows into this swale and then it runs along slightly going off contour this way and then uh, as after it fills this swale it's supposed to overflow and travel across land and come into this next swale which also is full of water and that swale also gets overflow from this pond, which is nearly full. And watching them level up, you see, you know, if there's any alterations that need to be made, I might need to dig through this little um, swale connection channel a little bit more just to make sure the water does overflow this way into the pond and not that way over the edge of the pond. I've also got to, you know, grade all this loose dirt that the weeds have already grown through again, but... Um, you know, just too many things to do. I'll get around to it eventually, and we'll plant out the, the the areas around the ponds too. I did I did plant some tomato clones that I made this year that actually survived in like the hottest, driest part of the season. Just gave them a couple waterings and uh, planted them right before rain too, and they survived. I think pretty much because the ponds are just um, you know hydrating the water on the downhill side of them, which was kind of the idea. So. We'll plant lots of things that don't need a whole lot of attention up here just to cover the ground and sprawl, maybe more squash, you know, add some fertility and uh, just let the let the ponds hydrate them. But yeah, some more corn beans and squash and hazelnuts in here and the weeds obviously taken over, but I'm primarily excited to see all this water in here that's going to slowly percolate into the swales and, uh, you know, hydrate these young um, hazelnut. Uh, shrubs they're it's fall and their their leaves are turning brown so they're not dying they're just they're just going into dormancy but yeah just like that last one this swale overflows it'd be it would have been cool to see this overflowing or, or you know if they did I don't really know but again the idea is that overflows into this swale 
Again, they're all going from my right to my left. I guess it's the same as your right and left because you're you're looking from my point of view. But um, yep, and that pond does this, that swale does the same thing. Overflows at the end over there into that swale, and that swale also gets the overflow of this water. Um, same deal. This one's definitely graded such that if it fills all the way up, it'll go into that swale. Uh, yeah, I can just see by eye the, the banking is is definitely high enough there. And um, yeah, this swale had, along with the hazelnuts, had some tomatoes, and they did much better. I think further down the hill here, we have a little bit more sun, and these tomatoes were gigantic. I, I don't know if I ever watered them, except for maybe right when I planted them. There's also onions and basil in here. These swales for sure performed super well, gave us big yields with basil and tomatoes and onions with pretty much zero care because um, we're getting into the sun here and they're all getting fed from the from the pond overflow you see more standing water in here super cool to see and then finally this one overflows again goes into this one but this is the first one to change directions because this is the edge of the woods here and we need to keep this lane open for access with the truck trailer BCS, whatever we want. So this one actually is pitched from this side, this way, and uh, also full of water. This is more corn, beans, and squash. Did a bit better because it's got more sun. Uh, there's a couple little squash I still need to harvest. And then this, this swale is going to overflow right here. And since we don't have the machine anymore, all the rest of the uh, pond digging will be done by hand. And they'll just get smaller and smaller as they move down the hill. But you can see this little area is a bit depressed. It's uh, it's not sad. It's just low and wet. So I'll make a hand dug pond here and then pitch it, you know, back across the slope that way. And on down the landscape, every time there's a depression, turn it into a pond with a swale that catches the overflow and draws it. Um, slightly off contour to the next little depression all the way to the greenhouse down there so we're gonna be you know passively irrigating the greenhouse all the way from up there at the highest pond to all the other little ponds all the swales that connect them with overflow on and on and on down the hill all the way to the greenhouse uh, this little cairn here is where there's a ledge in the field so we don't keep on destroying the mower blade with it gonna make another cairn anywhere there's visible ledge and giant rocks and um and yeah so where i'm walking right now is sort of a ridge line between two watersheds those compost bins are sort of on that line too that sort of separate you know the greenhouse side watershed that's connected to the ponds up yonder and then also this other watershed to the left so I'm gonna do the same thing over here. Leave, leave a big swath for driving the trailer and truck around. The trailer, you know, has to have big turns, so much of this won't be cultivated. But right here is another little depression, which might be the beginning of a small pond, and do the same thing. Zigzag, slightly off contour, back and forth down the slope. This is gonna be the primary, huge main garden area. Full sun, the flattest spot, but still got plenty of these little holes uh, with in which to make ponds and little swales that connect them. A lot of these holes, can here's one too, a lot of these depressions in the ground were from old apple trees that used to be here that got blown up actually out of the ground way back in the day when they wanted to just have it be more field and less orchard. Um, so they're, they're sort of guideposts to create new ponds. Um, so it's kind of just working with what's already happened with human intervention and just what's happened over the years naturally and lastly as part of this video don't want to meander on too long basically don't want to show the ponds but now that we're here this is just a uh, compost pile to, uh, potato planting so I had extra seed potatoes I let them get green last winter so I turned them into seed potatoes and planted them in this compost pile because I kind of ran out of space to put them and um that might be why they are, you know, half of them are frost killed and half are still alive. It might be because of the heat from this compost. But they made really big plants, planted them like beginning of August, so they're definitely late potatoes. But, you know, I'll still get just that much more yield. I'm going to harvest these pretty soon. I'm kind of just letting them keep going while they've still got some viable leaves to photosynthesize. But anyway, it's a quick little tour of the, the wet hill field 
in the pond and swale system that we're doing and kind of that pattern we're looking to replicate everywhere we want to grow and there's the greenhouse and uh I'll make a little video about getting that back into operation for the winter greens and such and yeah thanks for checking it out um keep on digging see you next time